The purpose of this video is I'm going to introduce you to two different tools that will help you um, develop your site and also take a look under the hood more so underneath other websites you might find on the web. Perhaps the example websites or even a lot of you are sharing websites that you're finding on the web that just have really cool uh, visual designs and or functionality. So this will help you look underneath the hood of those as well, more so than just right clicking. So we're going to take a look at Firebug and we're also going to take a look at the Web Developer Toolbar. I am using um, Firefox for my browser and these are all plugins for Firefox. Chrome has their own versions of some of these plugins, um, but I'm using uh, Fire the most recent version of Firefox. So to get started, I'm going to show you where you can find these tools. And one of my personal recommendations whenever you're installing add-ons to your browsers, always make sure that you're installing them from um, like through, through like perhaps like in Chrome, you actually go into a specific kind of like uh, Google Store to download uh, your add-ons. Firefox also, also has their own add-ons area. Um, if you ever go to a site and it says install this to your browser, you're not actually doing it through uh, a designated place from the browser itself, like that's endorsed by the browser. There's a good chance it could be just be installing junk on your browser that you don't want, like extra toolbars or extra search things that you just don't need. These things would just bog on your browser. So just be safe from where you're actually from where you're actually getting these um, tools. So let's let me show you where you can get Firebug. So just go to Google and type Firebug. Um, the first site that you get is the Firebug site, or it should be. And then this is Firebug, most popular, powerful web development tool. Um, this combined with the web developer tool, I think, are two great set tool sets to have uh, for your browser. So you can just go to install Firebug. And at first you're probably thinking, well, hey, didn't he just say that you're supposed to be downloading it from an official Firefox site? Well, we actually haven't gotten to that spark yet, but notice it does say Firebug for Firefox. And then, um, so we're just going to click on download to download the most recent version. And this is the add-ons area of Firefox. This is addonsmozilla.org. So make sure that you're, for Firefox, you're getting them from here. I already have this. Whenever you install it to your browser, it's going to put this nice little Firebug uh, tool set up here at the top. And you can always go and choose what things that you want in your main toolbar. This just takes me to my home. This here shows me my history. This is just a quick access to my bookmarks. And then this takes me to Firebug. But, I mean, this allows Firebug to be launched within my browser. Uh, another one that I was mentioning as a great resource for us is the Web Developer Toolbar. Web Developer Toolbar. And this will take us straight to um, Firefox, the add-on site. And this is just another toolbar that I recommend putting into your browser. Now, keep in mind the more toolbars and, and more things you put in your browser, like I was mentioning, do, does slow down your, your, because it's essentially something that's always going to be running within your browser. So uh, be cautious about how many things that you have in your browser. And if you are now in your browser and you're looking up and you see all of these multiple toolbars and perhaps junk that you didn't expect to be there, I would suggest perhaps uninstalling your browser, installing a new one. There's a good chance those toolbars and all that junk could still be there. Uh, but just figuring out how to cl clean those out. You can do a quick search on Google about the specific toolbar that you have and it'll just give you resources on how to remove it. We also, I've seen in this class before, a lot of people will just kind of like uh, go into the open forum and just chat about, hey, I'm having this problem with my browser. I have this funky askonline.com toolbar, or, or I have these uh, other types of toolbars that I, any suggestions on how to remove it, and we can kind of all help each other uh, remove those. So let's take a second and talk about the first one, which was Firebug. So I'm going to go ahead and go to a website that we'd like to nitpick. How about webster.edu? So this is what the Webster website looks like. You guys are all probably familiar with this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on Firebug. So now as soon as I turn on Firebug, you get this nice little pop-out menu at the bottom. Now this is going to help me look under the hood. Like I said, this is going to help us look under the hood more so for uh, websites that we like or maybe websites that we don't like and see what exactly is going on with them. Um, so what we can do is the, mo the most, I'm not going to give you tell you everything that you can do with Firebug. There's so many things that you can do with it, but I'm just going to kind of just give you 
just a basic thing that I personally use it for and again it's used for a lot of other things so what I'm going to use Firebook for mainly is just to inspect content on a page so to do that I'm just going to click on this inspect icon here so when I click on this inspect element it now allows me to essentially inspect the website and down in the environment the Firebug environment below it shows me exactly where that is within the code so instead of selecting something and then viewing a selected source or something like that it shows it to me dynamically now well, let's say I wanted to look at this image for example it now shows me down here below uh, it shows me where the image is and I can actually select it and I can go to webster.edu paste in that image and now it shows me I mean that's essentially where the actual image is that's something fun you could do because sometimes it may be difficult to find different images make sure you're in the inspect mode so now let's say like this background color this background color is uh, pound four four six six a six I could change that I can actually change the background color to another color I can change it to black but you'll notice it's not changing that's because it's controlled also by CSS and over here in the right we also have our CSS panel and I can change it there as well So now that I've changed it in both places, it now changes Webster's background to being black. Is it best practice for them to have their background color controlled uh, within the page itself and also on CSS? Well, the answer is no. So that would, in my opinion, be something that would be con fully controlled by the external CSS. Surprisingly, their external CSS is very simple. And this is, remember, I just changed it to black, so that's why that's there. If I was to Deselect, you can actually deselect things here and then go back over to the HTML. That's why that's still there. So we could call this one yellow. So now if this is yellow, but over here in the CSS it's not being used. So if I if I deselect it, if no, if I actually select it again, so now I'm letting it go through. So think about how the browser reads the code. It's going to read the external CSS first and so that's the first one it's going to read even though that I changed it in on the page to yellow some other things that you can change is you can actually change text um, so not just the code but you can actually change the, the text that's being rendered uh, you can't change like some of these things like you would think oh I could change this from saying prospective students to future students or something like that but this is actually as you can see this is being controlled by an image so prospective students that's actually an image here that's at images that's this location here so I can show you that as a, just for giggles so that's that image for prospective students so we can't change that but let's say we wanted to change here it says summer volleyball we can change it to saying um, summer basketball so now it says summer basket I'm oh, sorry, basketball. So now it says summer basketball on the Webster Groves campus. So there is some content that you can actually change. Um, but you always got to toggle between. You have to go back here to uh, the inspect tool. So the purpose of this video is I just wanted to get you kind of into Firebug and, and see some different, th different things you can do with it in terms of HTML and CSS. There's lots of other things you can do here in terms of even editing. JavaScript and things like that, but this would be a quick way for you to kind of get in and edit um, CSS and see how some different things are being rendered, rendered. So let's take a look at our next developer tool. So I'm going to go ahead and close Firebug. All I got to do is just toggle it off. So now it's off. And now I can bring that web developer browser, web developer toolbar open. So I'm just going to go to options and I'm going to add, so because I've already added it to my browser, so I'm just going to add the web developer toolbar. So now up here at the top, we have things like disabling different aspects of some things that are showing up in the browser, so we can disable uh, Java and other things like that. 
we could uh, stop cookies from from maybe you know uh, not being cached if there's a reason why you might want to do that and some other things that you can do with cookies you could disable CSS you could disable all styles then look what happens to our page so that just kind of quickly shows you what was being controlled by CSS so we could also view the CSS when we click view view CSS it just opens up your uh, another page within your browser that just shows the CSS this is not editable like on Firebug, which is another thing that you might want to do. So this shows all the CSS that's being controlled on the page. Not just, like, here's just the main CSS, but also other CSS that's controlled on the WebStreet EDU page as well. You could disable images. You can find out other information on the page. There's other miscellaneous things you can do. You can, within here, this would be a fun way, like even with your own site, you bring it up in LabWebs, which we'll get to LabWebs uh, next week. But once you get your page up on the internet, you can quickly go and validate the CSS. So let's validate Webster CSS. So even Webster has four different areas for the CSS. We could validate, uh, we could validate the HTML. They have 32 errors and two warnings. <laughs> And we'll talk more about validation next week, but that's just something uh, you know for giggles you can kind of see. I'm sorry to pick on the Webster website, but maybe that's the reason why it's being uh, updated. You know, view source, that's stuff that we've used before, you know, different options. So this is just another thing that you can do, perhaps. Uh, you know, Firebug allows more, you know, custom mobility in terms of editing different information, but just this toolbar uh, you might want to use as well, um, depending on uh, some things that you might want to do. One of the things I did forget to mention about Firebug, um, before we go into there, I'm just going to go ahead and disable this um, the web developer toolbar. I'm going to open Firebug back up. One of the neat things that you, when we get into discussing the box model, which is coming up, uh, you can actually use Firebug to look at the different layout that's being controlled by CSS in terms of the box model. So you could add, for example, right now the page, this is the dimensions of the page, you could add more padding to that page and it just gave more padding up at the top you can get more padding over on the sides same with the border same with the margin so that's another fun thing you can do um, when we start learning about the, the box model you can you can change these dimensions and then see how and see what it does to the page, and you can see where that stuff is controlled uh, within here as well. So anyway, so those are your two different tools. I just want to just give you a broad overview of Firebug and the Web Developer Toolbar um, as some options just for inspecting uh, CSS that's out there, manipulating it, and learning it, and then maybe even for your own site, whenever you get it up into LabWebs or or, or hosted it even on your own computer, you could start um, inspecting it and maybe figuring out ways to edit it and do things different with it this way. So enjoy.